Kia ora guys, Bird here. Welcome to episode 13 of Thorncraft 5. Now something fairly interesting has happened for the first time here in TC5. We've received an update. We're now on 5.1.1 if I recall correctly and there have been a couple of changes. I believe uh, if we take a look inside of the Thormonomicon itself, one of the basic changes that we have here is that there's a new wand focus. Uh, we'll get to that once we actually get to the wand focus. We haven't really done that yet. But I have just uh, started the episode here before starting it rather. I just noticed that there are one or two minor bugs with updating but hopefully uh, I won't spot anything else dangerous today. I want to get started uh, back here in the Thormonomicon. I spotted something here in the artifice tab up here. We've got the redstone relay. Magical Redstone Interaction. This is one of these new ones where you can pick it up for experience levels instead of uh, aspects, I believe. So this one costs three levels. So let's go ahead and pick up the Redstone Relay and that sure enough that drops us down to 20 Savon. Oh man, so what does this have to say? You've always been curious about the seemingly negative reaction between mystical devices and Redstone signals. You have studied the matter and while it's a well-known phenomenon that Redstone inhibits magic, you have discovered that in specific circumstances, the opposite can be true as well. One practical application of this is the redstone relay. By sending a redstone signal through a magical substance like these crystals, you can inhibit it as much or as little as you want. These crystals inhibit it. Inhibit it from doing what exactly? I guess that'll become important later on, so... To make the redstone relay, you need some auto shards, a redstone torch, and a brass gear. Oh man, we've had a bit of trouble making brass in the past. And then some stone slabs as well. So it's kind of like a redstone repeater sort of thing, except it's got some magically stuff on top of it as well. It takes a chump change aspect as well. Relays are placed much like redstone repeaters with their output side marked by the redstone torch. Unlike repeaters, relays have two toggles. The rearmost one determines the minimum input and signal required to overwhelm this inhibiting effect and allow the relay to activate. The front toggle next to the redstone torch determines how strong the signal is that the relay will output once it's active. So near redstone in the game, the redstone slash wizard fans in the community of Thorncraft will be jumping up and down. Or with their wands in hand, I guess. <laughs> jumping up and down, of course, because we got the boots of the traveler in the last episode with a fantastic jump height. <laughs> Alright, I think I want to actually go back inside here today. It's going to be one of these uh, researching episodes here, by the way. So that's the first thing that I wanted to get out of the way. I feel like the Thormostatic Harness, if it's going to be here in the Thormonomicon, it's going to be down in this area. And we still haven't unlocked it yet. We can't even see that it's here. So I was thinking, well, what could we do that might potentially unlock that? Now I was thinking to myself, well maybe some of the stuff over here, the Essentia tubes, will might do the trick. Because it is technically an Essentia sort of thingy. <laughs> anyway, so the first one over here in the Essentia tubes requires another three levels. This is something that I did not prepare for, otherwise I would have got 33. Oh well, let's go ahead and pick that up and that's good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and learn about Essentia tubes here as well. Transportation! of Essentia. We definitely need this if we're going to do much more with the Essentia. You have discovered several ways to transport Essentia, but none of them has proven useful for a large-scale alchemical operation until now. <laughs> you have unlocked the key to creating a stable and relatively leak-free tubing. While mundane chemicals can be transported in glass, certain types of Essentia either dissolve or simply pass right through it. By wrapping the glass in iron and treating it with quicksilver, you've managed to protect it from even the most volatile types of Essentia. Gold fittings finish off the piping system and make it visually appealing. That's the recipe right there, so that does not seem to have changed, I don't think. It still requires a heap of iron and just a little bit of quicksilver and gold in there as well, as well as again some chump change aspects. Chump change vis, I should say. So, and you get eight for that. So, yeah, it's like four iron per Essentia tube. Pretty expensive stuff in the iron department. The tubes can be connected to all manner of alchemical devices, though their watered jars and alembics are their primary targets. Essentia flows through the tubes whenever something is connected to them that can accept it, like watered jars. Jars containing different types of Essentia will only draw their kind of Essentia towards them. 
Tubes, however, can only draw and transport one kind of essentia at a time. The highest drawing strength will take priority. Without the proper use of valves, it's quite easy for a network of tubes to get gummed up. The use of valves is essential! <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of talking about the whole typed, untyped sort of suction things. I've actually just noticed there's actually um, sprites for the essential tubes now. Okay, that's interesting. Anyway, let's keep going here. We, oh, we got the valve, by the way. So you basically take a lever and essential tube and that gets you a valve. A pretty useful thing. I think it can be controlled with redstone. When you see gases being vented from a tube, it means different kinds of suction are interfering with each other. The colour gives a clue as to the type of suction, so it's kind of like a debug sort of thing in your system when you've got smoke, things ain't going to work. <laughs> the essential valve acts much like a normal length of tubing, except it can be turned on and off by hand or redstone signal, like I just said. When this is done, the flow of essential through it will be cut off, which I did not say, but you could kind of guess. <laughs> and the essential resonator, this guy, is handy for troubleshooting your tube network. You can use it on a tube or other Essentia using device to see what Essentia it currently contains and the suction it's applying. To make this guy you need a 4 iron, a stick, a nether quartz, some chump change of vase, <laughs> and then you get this guy here, your, uh, what do they call it, a tuning fork, that's right, I need to rename it at some point, so... The Essentia Resonator, it's great if you're messing around with your Essentia systems, if, you, if like you're doing anything to do with Essentia tubing, you might as well just have that in your inventory. And I'd probably just end up carrying it around with me as well, just to stop me from having to run around and find it. It's a great item, and it's also really good at making a nice dee sound when you bang it against a surface. <laughs> Anybody ever use tuning forks? Tubes can be connected and disconnected from their neighbours by clicking on a section of tubing with a wand. The wand can also be used to click on the central section to rotate certain tubes like the valve. Yeah, that's kind of useful as well because uh, a fun fact, like the side of the tube that the valve is on will not actually output a, a pipe that way. So if you need a pipe to go that way, you can uh, move the valve around and get the pipe. Anyway, so that's the Essentia system, uh, the basics of the Essentia system. Uh, unlocked there, ready to go. Did that unlock anything here? No, perhaps we need to delve a little deeper, perhaps. Uh, yeah, let's let's give that a try. I guess we can go into the advanced Essentia tubes then. What you want, where you want it. So that requires another three experience levels. Okay, thankfully those guys require <laughs> research notes. So what is this one all about? We've got some new pipes, I suppose. The filtered Essentia tubes work like normal tubes, except it's possible to mark them with labels, files, or other items that carry a clearly identify a single type of Essentia. When marked, they will restrict Essentia flow through them to what they have been marked with. Shift-clicking on them with an empty wand will remove the filter. So yeah, you can put um, like all the different Essentia labels on there and, and make some pretty intricate systems. I believe I tried using them a couple of times, but the problem is, is that once you get really big Essentia systems, they, they kind of start to lag your world a little bit, so careful with that. But yeah, it's a pretty easy recipe there as well. The Essentia filters, though, are not so easy to come by requiring the silverwood planks, though, which I still have not found a steady supply of. I still only have my very limited supply. Where is it? It's not too limited, but yeah, every block counts at the moment with silverwood. Now, what else do we have here? Here we go. The restricted Essentia tubes, these guys, work like normal tubes, except they, except they have the suction passing through them. A really nice item if you need to if you need to set like a priority system where essentially you can go one way and if it can't go that way then it could go the other way or uh, making a really short section seem longer or no really long section. It, it, it's, <laughs> it has its uses. I've used it a couple of times. It's pretty cool. And a stone there as well. I think they've actually decreased the cost of these a little bit. I remember them costing more and being harder to make. Alright, and the final guy that's over here, the directional Essentia tube, only accepts suction from one direction. The blue markings indicate the direction from which suction will be accepted. In other words, uh, the way that the blue band is is the way the Essentia will go. And that's it right there. I haven't really found too much of a use for this guy because, you know, the whole suction thing. A uh, suction kind of dictates that, but if you're a bit, little bit newer to it, you kind of can use this sort of diode uh, sort of system here, I suppose, if you want it, it requires some lapis 
and it's yeah, it's pretty expensive to craft as well and lapis isn't exactly uh, the greatest item to use in recipes in the world now because it's used for enchanting the essentia buffer which i'm guessing is the next guy man <laughs> allows you to store a limited amount of essentia eight points total though it can be made up of any combination of essentia types like a jar it has suction though it applies the minimum amount of suction possible one this means that it's usually only able to draw essentia from an essentia source directly attached to that has a suction of zero, might I add. However, tubes can connect to all its sides, meaning that it is invaluable for getting essentia out of devices like the centrifuges that could contain variable types of essentia. You can attach bellows to the buffer, and each attached balance increases the suction by 32, which allowed uh, me in TC4 to create what I called Essentia Pumps, which essentially just allow a much longer tube of Essentia. I'm motioning like a big long line here with my hand that you can't see. You could basically, instead of just having a little thing like that, you with the Essentia Pumps, you could have yeah, an infinite loop, basically, of Essentia pumping around, which is something I actually did build. Additionally, you can toggle individual connections on and off as with a normal tube, but if you shift click a connection it will choke the suction back to one blue band or zero red band on that side, and that's the mechanic that allows you to uh, loop the essentia. And this allows some interesting... yeah, that... <laughs> the recipe for it is a kind of... they're kind of tedious to make, I remember just making them in batches of like four or five, just so that they're sitting around because, you know, this recipe Ain't the easiest thing in the world. Well, it, it's it's not that it's hard to make, it's just, you know, tedious. So you just make a lot of them at once to save bother later on. And then this guy here, now Chemical Construct. Okay, that's over here now. Uh, the re this is just one of these blocks that they just throw in later. It doesn't look like uh, centrifuges are in here. Okay, we might have to learn about those guys later. So yeah, the Alchemical Construct. Just one of those precursor material sort of things. Made some iron, great wood, valves, and normal tubes, okay. That's pretty expensive, but you don't need to make very many of those. Again, uh, I just like to make a couple of those at a time, just, you know, just so that you can make multiple things of whatever you need. All right, I think we'll go ahead and let's see, that did that unlock these guys? I might have to see what you guys have to say in the comments below about what that might be. Is there something else that we can do to finish off the episode here? Um, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and get our Crystal Farmer, perhaps. So let's kind of finish off the basic information tab again. So we're going to need the research note for that. Let's pick up some scrubbing tools and paper. Oh no, let's go back in the Thorma Warmy. So that's a... there we go. Oh, I thought that was going to be an XP, but no. Okay, so that's kind of light blue, maybe Sinsus or Wheat Trails. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, this one we're probably going to have to cheat here because that is kind of insane. Well, I guess we'll try and get started here by taking some ayer and ingis to make looks. And yeah, that works. Okay, that just looks a little bit strangely colored. I'm not, I don't know. And then those guys will connect via weak tools. Yes, those guys is going to have to be... Let's see, uh, perimultatil like that. Uh, Weetium... Okay, that's going to have to be Potentia then, and then this guy, well, we're already using those two, so you see how this becomes a problem fairly quickly. Is there anything that's got Wittre, you'll send it. Let's have a quick look-see. I don't think we will find anything, though, no. It's just kind of one of those on there, just out there aspects now. Um, okay. Yeah, I think we will just go ahead and cheat for this one, guys. I don't like to cheat. But uh, I guess this is a good opportunity to show people how easy it is to just, like, cheese the system by taking those two. I think we can make Wakwas like this. Yes, Wakwas will connect across there. And then I think, uh, yeah, let's just use another Wakwas to connect those two guys up. Okay. <laughs> see what I mean? And then weak tools. Let's see if we can do something with these guys. Yeah, I think we'll just do something like uh, aqua maybe or yeah let's do aqua and then we can go uh more to us like this and then we'll go peritio like that and there we go <laughs> then we'll go aquas so easy uh let's see so that's all that cooked up and then let's just throw some more aquas down 
because that'll work. There you go. <laughs> Four white crosses saved the day. And saved a heap of time as well, apparently, because that was that was a pretty crazy one. I don't think we would have been able to do that one. That would have taken it would have either taken way too long or just flat out impossible because it used all the primals and the actual research there. Anyway, we've got the research here. Crystal Farmer. What does it say? You've made a couple of discoveries that have given you the ability to turn these into planable crystals on stone. I've kind of turned into an 80s game show host. What is more, you can now pluck a single shard from a crystal growth without having to break it. Simply right-click on it with your wand. Courtesy of Azanor Industries. <laughs> so there you go, you get your various crystal types, the recipe, you take a water shard, some seeds, some Slismon Dulce, which we haven't had to use much yet, at, well, at all in the series yet. It's kind of hard to make, and you need some essential as well, it looks like. Various ones have different instabilities. What's the one that's moderate there? Go back to it. Okay, that's the tainted one. Of course it is. Oh, well, there you go. What's these guys? Um, yeah, that's an infusion. Celestimundus, so that's what I was going to do. <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys the recipe here. So you need to burn balance shards. And the recipe for balance shards is kind of crazy. I What I need, what I want to do, um... Kind of starting really soon here, probably between this episode and next episode, is I'll actually uh, basically start breaking a whole heap of stuff down to gather up a heap of Essentia. That kind of ties into the whole, uh, let's see what tab, this tab kind of ties into the whole Essentia thing. I really want to get uh, moving on with basically what I want to do, sort of long term goal here, is to get a new Hobbit hole here that's basically my Essentia storage area. But that's all going to have to be in future episodes, because we're out of time for today. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Back to Thorncraft, updating it! <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Kia kaha, and I'll see you in the next one.